<laughs> <laughs> I guess something that comes to mind that I'm kind of curious your thoughts on is uh, like the idea of severity or, or here like <clears throat> specifically like often like when, when I think of, of extreme things I, I think of like loud or long you know like this kind of mm -hmm. the, the angle that that points at is one of maximal whereas here like there's almost a severity but like in terms of the minimal like it's it's a lot of space. It's a lot of like okay, quiet. A lot of like silence. Like, what's your like like what's your what are your thoughts on severity? I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't. I've never used this word. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's it's a cool word. Um, I think. Um, when I when I come to improvise, I kind of just make my music, mm -hmm. whatever that might be, um, and. Sometimes that ends up being with someone else fairly quiet if they either want to go along with the quietness or they find it interesting or they're also making quiet music mm. of their own kind. Um, but I've been in situations where my quiet music is met by, met by quite busy, loud music. So um, the situation ends up being not that severe in this way. Hmm. So I guess I never intend to set up a certain situation um, as a whole. Mm. Um, I guess that's the only way I can answer that. I'm not sure if that... Yeah, I, I mean, I guess the idea is where, where I'm kind of getting at is that, so for example, like, I don't, I wouldn't say like I often play very sparse or quiet or um, minimal, you know, whatever that word means, mm -hmm. but in a context, so like, for example, if you were doing the, again, using like severity as a, like maybe a metaphor, jumping off point, if you were on the other end of the severity spectrum and you were like very loud and busy, mm -hmm. that's something that I could um, either engage with or not, but in a, in a, it sets um, the ground truth as a loud place mm -hmm. where another person can come in. You, obviously, you could both end up loud, but like if you're in a quiet space and the ground truth is there, if I go loud, that just masks anything you might contribute in a way that's perhaps not interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I mean, if you were amplified in like a kind of loud way where like any little thing was very loud, then that would be a different thing. But 
in a, in a circumstance like this where you're essentially acoustic, if I do anything loud, you functionally disappear. Yeah. So there's like a sensitivity, at least for me, to not want to play solo, you know, with mm -hmm. some, you know, so, so like there's like a kind of a magnetism to a more quiet space in order to engage in, in a way that kind of, um, there's some dialogue or, or, or whatever, but there's, there's more than one person playing, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's something that I'm kind of aware of. So in, in this case, it's brought me to like a sort of a choir sparser area, which is interesting because it's not something I typically do. Although I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say it's like my, my jam, but like, I don't feel uncomfortable in it. It's just mm -hmm. like, I tend to, um, speak faster musically, mm -hmm. you know, like given my druthers and stuff. Um, so I, I guess, yeah, I mean, like, what would, like, how would you describe your, in, what's the one wrong word or the one wrong summary word of your improvisational practice? <laughs> if severity isn't it, like, what's also not it? Well, I mean, I, I used the word necessity a minute ago, and I think this mm. is it, whatever is necessary. I mean, there was a moment where um, you made me have to confront myself and just wanted to be, like, um, in dialogue you left a lot of space for me. Mm. There's a space where I just needed to like swallow mm. and just using my voice, I just was going to swallow and there was a lot of open space for that. And so there's like just an audible <laughs> that happens. Um, and I was waiting in some ways because I was like, I need to I need to do this, but I'll wait for Rod to start something then I'll gulp a bit. Yeah, but yeah. you were waiting for me. And so we yeah. kind of, we were tiptoeing around this like wanting to leave space for each other in different ways. Um, yeah. I think, yeah, there's a couple things that you said that were really interesting. Like, um, the idea of covering me up, you know, um, I assume at some point you would create some kind of space, even if your phrasing is quite loud, mm. you might have like these like short silences. And if I just mm. come through in these little short silences, mm. this for me, this is a form of contributing that I'm okay with. Mm -hmm. um, and that, uh, yeah, this is, this is, um, for me, this is a meaningful, it, um, I'd say, most of the way I conceive of improvising, I usually play in duos if I can help it. Mm -hmm. I don't like playing solo and mm -hmm. I don't, more than three, it, it tends to be a lot for me to navigate in this way, but I tend to think of us improvising in parallel lines. We're making mm -hmm. two different musics and sometimes um, a music happens together mm -hmm. and most of the time not. And this is, um, otherwise I'm searching for certain earworms or idioms I have in my head that I want to represent in some way. Like mm. if I hear you do something and I think, oh, that would, what I would could do with my voice might sound cool here. I'm mostly just going to map it to some kind of sound world I already kind of know in some way. Mm -hmm. or like I have some intuition relationship too. Mm -hmm. um, um, for, for me, this doesn't work. I, many improvisers do incredible things with this mindset of like, I know it can go here and they do. And it's like, whoa, I never would have thought those two things would work, you know? Um, but for me, I, I don't, I don't find my own intuitions that clever per se, so I tend to avoid them if I mm. can. So I tend to just play in some kind of parallel line with someone else. And then if we overlap and make, I think there's a couple of times there where I would identify what we did as a certain music that I understand. Hmm. There's a couple of places where I was like, yeah, I, I know where that music comes from through some um, memory I have. But yeah. a lot of the other things, I was happy that I don't have names for some of the things we were doing. That was nice. <laughs> so in, in terms of, I, I guess, jumping off a little bit of what you said ago of like having to gulp and, and what this means in terms of like having a parallel line because of the nature of the type of sounds and rate and dynamic that you're working at, you're up against physiology in a way that um, perhaps I'm not. And by that, I mean like you needed to swallow at some point and the yeah. volume at which you're performing means that the swallow will be audible. It's a significant thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whereas if you were any louder, it would just be, it would be meaningless, yeah. you know, or the same thing like a page turn or something like that mm -hmm. in a certain context is unbelievably loud yeah. um, and is, is a sort of a reality of a certain kind of performance practice. And there's a, like a, a like for me, the biggest version of that is object um, manipulation like I need to grab a thing or do a thing like there's a, mm. a physiological reality to some kind of pre-preparation that needs to happen in order to do certain kinds of things but that's often masked by performance gesture and other rate of change things that um, as much as possible I try that for that to not be significant yeah but it seems um, a part of the moment yeah yeah or, or like if I grab a thing and it's <laughs> not right to feel totally okay with putting it back which is is one of my bugbear pet peeves of like <laughs> percussion they'll grab the thing and it's like the moment's passed but it's like no fuck it I'm doing this thing now like so I, I tend to not want to do that but um, because of the type of language that you have that's very exposed so there's sort of like not half question there but also then when you said this idea of parallel lines like what your what sets your um, phrasing 
and sort of trajectories and form formal things like how does that exist in that space yeah um it's three three things one of them is obvious my breath mm -hmm. that decides um, how long a phrase can be at a maximum you know i can make it shorter but that's usually becomes about listening at that point whether it becomes shorter or not um a lot of the things i try to do with my voice i'm attempting to mix between two or three different sounds if i can help it in in like the resonance i work with mm -hmm. so um sometimes the rhythms that come up through that tell me what a phrase is. So that's also, I keep the kind of idiomatic listening as much as I can to myself. Like hmm. I hear a certain set of rhythms, to me that represents a certain kind of phrase and then I'll stop. And I, and I know I'm gonna capture a certain kind of like nuances from different kinds of music I listen to or different ways I think about hmm. hearing. Um, but then in relation to you, I would per, I, I try to make as much distance as possible in, in a way. Okay. Um, um, I know here has to be rather specific and particular to me. Mm -hmm. um, so I might as well try and make whatever interesting that could happen happen elsewhere because I do mm. this every day. So yeah. it's I don't I don't I'm not convinced I'm going to come up with anything too interesting here. Even though mm. sometimes sounds happen, I'm not um, trying to do or as familiar with. Like sometimes I'll make a sound like whoa I didn't know I could do that just now. But mm. who, who knows if I'll do that again? But I'm not as interested in those little nuggets of like vocal um, happy accidents than I am just like whatever. Um, severe thing happens between us. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I like this word severe. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'll carry it as my new like badge, but um, I think there is a severity um, to me in this mm. kind of yeah. This there's a, there's an oppositional quality to these parallel lines. I, I mm. can see this um, in that like we are just stubbornly on our own missions, and then sometimes our missions overlap, and that's when a certain music might happen. And this is this is good. And otherwise, I'm happy to just play next to you, and that's really cool too. Yeah. Yeah. So with that, how much of that is the, is there like a conscious or unconscious mapping? Because you said like you specifically like to have like, not necessarily binary, but like uh, by stable or some kind of, you didn't use either of these words, yeah, yeah. but some kind of thing that has con contains more than one component. Yeah, yeah. Um, how <clears throat> much of, is, is there a relationship between that and this, this sort of like parallel things or other music that you work in? Is there a kind of, is juxtaposition between two elements like a significant Thing. Yeah, I'd say like if I'm making a single sound um, with a very simple technique and then I hear something in the room, whether that's you or if I'm in a space that has much more things going on, this room is mostly you, right? Mm. Um, then I might shape my mouth to mimic that sound in some way, but it's a gradual shaping. So it's, um, I have an imagination for what I think that sound, like you hit a snare, I have an imagination for those formants. Mm -hmm. And as I'm continuing the sound I'm doing and I start moving towards, the, towards those formants slightly, mm -hmm. I'll get to another place that's neither where I started nor some imitation of you. Mm -hmm. And it won't sound like your snare drum at all, but it was where I physically went to to help make the situation happen. So I am, um, even though it's parallel lines, I mean, the, I listen, I need something outside of me to take me somewhere. Mm -hmm. I don't think my voice does much on its own other than just make a sound. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not too excited about sounds, even though yeah, yeah. they seem quite precious, but at the end I'm not there. I, I just find them meaningful because they can, they're malleable. And hmm. um, as of right now, where my techniques at, the louder I get, the less malleable some of them are, so. How much of that is um, different, let's say like what you hear back yourself? Because voice is, I guess unique in the way. I mean, I guess maybe some other instruments where it's physically coupled to your head, you hear it quite loud, but like yeah. voice, you hear, you personally hear very different, like mechanically than I do. Yes. You know, like what is, I mean, even, I mean, like, like something where you record yourself and hear like a little sample back or something like that isn't very musically interesting, but like, does it mean something different if you were to hear, like if you were to listen to this recording like immediately after and hear the sounds that you were making disconnected from the physical, sound that it makes within your head you know yeah um i've been recording a lot these past three years of mm -hmm. like making like corpuses of stuff of just my voice like libraries of different kinds of vocal techniques and so i've listened to myself a lot mm -hmm. so at this point i i think i end up hearing the signature of the mic or the kind of way it's picked up more so than i hear a difference in my own voice i'm kind of getting used to those being two different voices hmm. yeah that's it's making more and more sense all the time the more i record myself and hear myself back what kinds of sounds i'm doing might translate and how the different mic situation ends up filtering whatever expectations I had. So yeah. I'm getting I'm getting used to it. I think yeah, because yeah. yeah, I just record a lot. Yeah, because yeah. there's a lot of even like like wet sounds or like like glottal sounds that are can kind of come out of the mouth, but like like little sounds like that that like I can barely hear. Yeah. But like are, are coupled to a physical movement that have a any, particularly anything spit related. Obviously, we feel in our mouths very clearly. Mm -hmm. So there's like a physical sensation coupled with. A sonic artifact that may not necessarily be significant 
um, that like, yeah, or like this kind of like internal external sound area, like gray zone, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, voices is, is kind of very cool in that way and, and how the, yeah, there's a lot of interesting things about it. Yeah. Yeah, because I just only started using my voice a few years ago and it's, um, it came out of just um, a lot of the musics I listened to. I was, I had a certain way of mapping metaphors to, to them and I wanted to find a way of making sound myself because I was a pianist and that was very divorced from a lot of the ways I was listening to different, mm. like, different kinds of music. And um, so my voice kind of became a natural place where I could navigate the tensions between those and I still don't feel like um, I, I know what that means yet, but somehow I stumbled into using my voice to make sound, yeah. Yeah. Do you still play piano, or is that still part um, of your I identity, I guess? I, I'll i play it for things, but I, I definitely don't feel like I, I don't enjoy playing the piano, let's put it this mm. way. I, I've I practiced, so I can play the piano in some ways, but um, you're likely able to find someone who's better practiced if you need <laughs> it for like a gig. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, but I'll, I'm... I find myself sitting down when I'm at like a house with a piano and playing some chords and that feels nice, but otherwise, um, not really, I guess. Short yeah, answer. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah similar. Like I, my, my history is, is that of the pianist, but like, I don't know, a piano or anything either. It, it's a very, as, as compared to, compared to a lot of instruments, it, like the discreteness of what a piano means is, yeah. yeah, it's a very specific and rigid instrument. Um, historically, obviously one can do a lot of things with that, yeah. but, um, it's a lot, yeah. 88 buttons it takes is, effort yeah yeah well there's that <laughs> <laughs> effort I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. want to no. yeah yeah <laughs> cool um yeah shall we make a, some more sound yeah yeah I, I was going to say I would be I'd be excited to um to hear more of your jam if you if you, if you want to give me your jam no oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll come at you with a bit more <laughs> a bit more jam <laughs> <laughs> when you said it was your jam, I was like, oh, I, I want to hear, hear what that's... I mean, I've yeah. heard it before other places. Yeah. I, I want to feel it in the room. I want yeah. to feel the raw jam. Bring me in. Yeah.
If you'd like to support the making of these videos, please join our Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.